Welcome to my Sleeper Kai Pond build. I'm uh, just doing the first cast of sleepers here. We're going to lay down on a bit of cement. I'm also took six flags out and we dug down about uh, two feet. Um, so we've got the three levels of sleepers screwed down with coat screws um, to make sure that they're pretty solid. Um, I'm going to put the skimmer in on this side here um, by the garage wall. I'm going to start um, using a circle saw to cut through the actual um, sleepers and then we'll start chiseling out the wood bit by bit just to make sure the Patnikoi skimmer box will fit so that's the shape I've created I'm just going to put the skimmer box in there make sure it fits correctly in the doors and it's nicely seated as you can see here so I've dug down a bit deep here and realised that we need to put a bit of drainage, a bit of gravel in there and then put in sand and some soil back down and I will expand the, uh, the dugout area later on. I'm putting the uh, tank connectors in there, um, also forming them in, making sure they're secure, um, ready for the returns. Obviously we've got two at the back, um, one for um, overflow and obviously uh, one, one for the actual um, pump. Here we're putting the skimmer box in, uh, put a little bit of wood underneath it just to raise it a little bit and we'll, and we'll start forming that in. Obviously uh, we'll have at least two returns at the bottom as well. Um, so I'm just forming it in so we can see the skimmer box in there correctly so it's uh, nicely seated. It does pop out a little bit but we'll sort that out later on. Um, and we're putting the foam in, make sure it goes off and making sure it's level here as well. Um, so I'm putting for some XPS uh, um, foam boards around the pond just to give it some extra insulation for the winter. Um, and there you go, I've foamed in around the tank connectors as well to make sure it fits nicely. And obviously we may do a bit more digging later on as well. Um, as you can see the skin box looks nicely seated and well made. Um, I've expanded, as I said earlier, the, the dugout area just to make it a bit bigger. We're using some underlay and some offcuts of liner just to protect the liner when I put it in so there's no sharp things. Obviously over winter we got all this uh, rain and lots of leaves and debris got in there to clean it out, take the liner out, clean it, uh, sort out the underlay here and then put the liner back in there. Um, and obviously that's more or less the set process I we're doing here. I'm just trying to shape the liner out. Um, I've made a frame here for a, a cupboard where the UV filter will actually go in and some of the piping and that'll go on the back uh, as well as hold the electrics. Uh, that's to protect the electrics obviously. Um, I'm putting the post up now. Um, you know, using coat screws to screw them in directly into the sleeper, not in the ground. Um, so essentially, that's more or less what I'm doing here. Um, this is the back left side near the garage, doing the same there. Um, I'm putting up a pergola here as well, um, and obviously. We, we're using bolts at the corners and the braces will be using some coat screws to screw them into place on all the corners. So here's a brace, um, cut it at a, a, very, a 45 degree angle and obviously put them in and screw them in tightly. Uh, I'm just showing you the long bolt there that goes through the actual post um, and we're just tightening those those bolts. They're, they're about 60 mil long. Um, and obviously you can see me with pliers uh, spanner there and tighten it. Obviously I realised that I need to adjust the height of the, uh, the the roof as well. I'm putting some brackets in there and I'll put another beam across there and I'll, I'll screw in there with some coat, coat screws just to secure the extra elevation that I've had to increase it so, so water will flow down. We need at least five degrees. Putting the polycarbonate sheet on the top there um, and we're just gonna secure that with those buttons that you get. Unfortunately, I, I would recommend you probably use different screws because they are a bit brittle. Um, so that's one of the buttons put in there properly. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you a picture here where there's various ones I put on and it's looking nice and pretty and it's secure um, and you know it fits nicely. Also I put a gut ring along the side there, um, a gut ring on the other side as well uh, just to get the water away. I also decided to put more gut ring along the garage so all the water will flow towards a drain that I've been put here at the bottom um, so obviously you can see how the water would run off both roofs into a, a drain. Here I've been putting some flashing on as well as you can see a bit a bit of silicon's put the flashing together um, that's just allow the water to flow off without going on the wood. Um, some a, a mini flashing here by, by the guttering uh, near, near the far corner, far wall next to the garage 
Um, and obviously here I'm just attaching the liner to the actual sleepers. Now we will be obviously uh, using a primer here to prime the folds, so glue them together so be n the folds, sh nothing should get behind the folds hopefully. Um, and obviously I'm just siliconing in the tank connectors here, um, you know, with a lot of silicon to make sure there's a good seal. Um, and obviously we've got four of those down at the bottom area here. Uh, three there and one uh, slightly further down. Um, and obviously this is the return. Sorry, this is the uh, overflow and, and that one is where, where the pump will, will end up going in towards the, uh, you know, the cupboard. Um, so obviously it's hopefully well sealed in most places. So uh, to the left is the overflow and the right is where the pump goes. Um, so I'm going to start cutting the liner here um, and I'll, instead of doing the, the, the tr traditional way with using a gasket in between the liner I decided to just silicon it all the way around give it a solid uh, um, silicon bond because those gaskets can fail um, and I just obviously decided to screw it in as well um, I've obviously you can see the screws in now um, and it looks well seated and I'm just sealing it around the, the perimeter to make sure we have a solid tight good seal and it's looking quite nice as you can see you can put a bit of silicon on the inside as well to seal that in, in there here I was going to put originally the pump on the inside of the pond but with various people giving me some advice and comments I decided to change that um, just slightly um, as you can see here, I just put a, a solid piece of pipe across um, and they, there's a better view there and obviously this is the piping on the other side near the garage obviously we've got two returns um, and obviously we'll connect our pumps to those as well I've decided to put a, a valve in between there so I can vary the flow and that's the pump there that goes um, from the rectal bottom drain um, obviously you can see there that that's the, another outlet that goes to the actual skimmer box and I've used a combination of solid pipe and PVC flexible pipe. Um, so the PVC pipe actually goes around the corner where the actual um, uh, post is and I've also done a diagram so you can see exactly what happens there. So there, there you can see the diagram, freeze the video if you want to see that more or less and obviously the water goes to the UV filter and out. Um, here's um, my capping that will go on, on top of obviously the sleepers and the uh, liner. Um, I've also done a, um, a, a cut out here for the skimmer box so it fits flush and obviously it fits nicely. I had to do a bit of sanding to get that to fit properly but it looks nice. So essentially that's more or less the pond complete. Hope you like this video. Um, and yeah, it's a fantastic uh, build I think. Please go to the description box to check out all the individual videos, there will be links there and please like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it and thanks for watching.